So in this nugget, we'll go ahead and download the Contact Flutter Express or UCCS editor. And this is the application that we use to create and modify our scripts throughout the series. But I want to start with where you find the editor, where you can download and install it yourself. And we'll go over the different window panes within the editor so we can get familiar with the actual interface. With the Contact Center Express editor, it allows us to create and modify our scripts. And depending what version that you're running, if you're running version 12, for example, here's the login screen that you see, which is quite different than the login screen in previous versions. So here's the login screen that I have been accustomed to since version 7.x. And what's funny is you upgraded the versions to 8, to 9, to 10, to 11. This login box never changed. And I always find it comical because this icon or this drawing here looks extremely old. Something you would find in a book from the early 2000s. But in version 12, they changed the actual login screen. So it looks a lot different. But even if you're running an older version of Contact Center Express, the functionality is still the same under the hood it just you may see a different login screen depending what version that you're on so in regards to the install i will bring up one of my virtual machines so we'll bring up firefox we'll log into our contact center express publisher node ucc at admin we do collab one two three in a period we'll hit login let me see if i can zoom out a little bit or zoom in all right let's see how that works out for us so where we want to go is go to tools We'll go to plugins and here's where we can download our CCX editor. So go ahead and click on the hyperlink there. So we'll hit save. We'll go ahead and wait for that to finish there and then we'll launch the executable. All right, so we'll double click that. I get a warning here for Windows 10. I'll just hit run. We'll hit yes to the UAC. And the install is pretty straightforward. So we hit nets. Now go ahead and take the default path. Hit nets again. Now we're going through the process of the install. All right, so at this point, we'll do a restart and we'll wait for the machine to come back up. All right, so we're back up and I'll go ahead and log in. Once installed, we can open up the CCS editor and then we should see that GUI that we saw earlier. So then we see the option for username, password, the contact center express server. We have the option to sign in or sign in anonymously. So if we chose sign in, we would be logging into the CCS server itself. So therefore, we would have access to the application repository on the server. Also this script repository on the server along with the document repository. We would also have the option to do a debug of a script or of a call coming into our contact center. So when you see sign in, just think about that you can log in to the server itself, not only to create scripts, but also use any resources on that server. Now we also have the option to sign in anonymously. And this is only to use the editor to create or modify a script. So we don't have any connectivity to the server itself to use any of those resources that we talked about earlier, including not being able to do a debug. So then we may ask, well, why would you even sign in anonymously to begin with? Well, maybe I just want to work on a script. I don't have the requirement to actually be connected to a server itself. Maybe I'm sitting on an airplane or maybe I'm sitting on the bus or train and I just want to modify a script so therefore I don't require that connectivity all right so we'll go ahead and log in as UCC as admin we'll put our password in and then we'll put the server or publisher node hq ucc at pub and I'll hit sign in the sign in always takes a little bit so be very patient it's not something that happens within seconds so the act of signing in does take some time and then we have our contact center express editor up and running so within our window we have four different panes and the first one here is our padded pane but then here we have the different steps that we can include in our script soon here we'll create our first script but you can take a step and drag it over to this pane here and this pane is actually called the design pane here's where we create and modify our scripts and here we have our variable pane and here we can have variables that store data that a script can use during execution as we create scripts in future nuggets, we'll definitely be using variables and we'll see different types of variables along the way. And then we have a message pane here or a message window. And this is used to give us information about not only script validation when we validate a script, ensuring that there's no errors within the script or the creation of that script, but also it gives us a debug status. And what's really nice if when we validate our script to check for errors, if it finds an error, once you click on the error, it will take you directly to the line of your script that contains that error. And again, we'll see that 
as we create these scripts throughout the course. So then going back to our editor, if I wanted to create a new script, I can go to file and new. And here we have templates that we can use. So for example, if I go to queuing and go to the simple queuing, I hit OK. And we maximize this window here. I do a right click and expand all so we can see the whole script in its entirety. Now don't worry about the context here, but here's a script that we can use in our environment and it's a template and we can easily modify it. So here are the many steps that we can use. And if I wanted to, I can, for example, drag a step here and automatically include it in my script. So I can easily do that for any of my scripts there. Here we have the different variables within this script here. And I'll just open up one. So type it being a string. Here's the name of our variable, CSQ. And then we can have a value for the string. And don't worry about this because we'll go through it in great detail, but I just want to show you what a variable may look like. Then if I go to tools and I go to validate, for example, notice I have a few errors here. We have a dangling go to. That's the one I just added right there. I did that intentionally. So I just drag steps over without defining them. But if I click on dangling go to, let's say if I were to put my pointer there and hit on this error here, it navigates me to where the error is. Same thing if I click on this error, it goes to that same portion of the script saying we haven't defined a label where we should go to. So in the next couple of nuggets, we'll start the creation of our first script and we'll spend a lot of time in this editor. We'll navigate through these different panes or different windows. In this nugget, we discuss the Contact Center Express editor. It allows us to create and modify our scripts. Depending on what version you have, you will see a different window when you launch the editor in your environment. We also went through the installation of the editor and also went through the different panes or windows that you may see when you have the editor up and running. So in the next nugget, we'll go ahead and create our first application. And then shortly after, we'll create our first script using the editor that you see here. I hope it's been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.